I think Stephen was very nervous going into this project. I think any director would be. And he needed to know that he had it right. He needed to know, uh, first of all, what his own point of view was on the story. Working on the movie for eight years, I assembled every book and documentary uh, on the subject that I could find, including all the news footage. And then we went to work on the script for the next year and a half. And then eventually, Tony Kushner came on at the end of last year. And once we got Tony Kushner involved, I think Stephen really felt that he was in a partnership with somebody who so deeply understood the complexity of these issues that we were on our way to having a screenplay that, that he felt comfortable shooting. The only film I've made before this was Angels in America, the Mike Nichols film of my stage play. And I, I think of myself as a playwright, not as a screenwriter. And my agent called up and said, you know, uh, Kathy Kennedy, is in town and said, would you like to have breakfast with her? And then she said, and we're working on this thing about the Munich Olympics massacre. And then she started to talk about what they were actually making, that it was really not the story of the, of the massacre itself, but the aftermath and this, this um, very murky, problematic, complicated story about the policy of targeted assassination. And I became very interested. Tony has such a clear feeling about what happened in 72, and he has so many he reads everything, and he's, he's just one of the most well-read authors I've ever experienced working with. So I had an amazing time just listening to Tony and learning from him and reading a lot of source books that I never read when I first got involved in this project when it was called Vengeance. There was a lot of reading that I hadn't done, and Tony turned me on to so many authors and philosophers and people on all sides of the political and cultural spectrum. And I got a real wonderful education about things that, as a Jew and as someone who was very, very concerned with that region, only thought that I knew about. And then Tony sort of, you know, gave me a total immersion into the politics and policies with a point of view coming from both sides, not just one side. I was very inspired by the fact that Stephen would be willing to put himself in that position to try that. And I saw how deeply he responded to the subject matter and how hard he worked on the script to try to make it as good as possible and as deep and as thoughtful about all the positions that are involved in this. 11-8. Give us the order and we begin. It is the story of a mission. It's a mission that wasn't acknowledged initially when it happened in 1972. Golda Meir pulled together a number of government officials and members of the Mossad and they decided to put together a list of people that they felt were responsible for what had happened in Munich. And they made the decision to try to go after those people. We were told it was a committee of 10 people decided uh, to sort of try and sentence to death um, uh, as many as 11, possibly more, possibly less, uh, but, but it was probably around 11 Palestinian men. <laughs> Some of the people that were targeted were definitely part of a terror network, and some of the people that were targeted were um, political leaders, uh, intellectual leaders. Forget peace for now. We have to show them we're strong. The idea was to call attention to the world, that Israel would not allow this to happen. And the mission she sends them on, it's almost an eye for an eye. It was a, an enormous thing to do because it, it could bring so much bad feeling towards Israel. But good or bad, she didn't pass the buck. She took the responsibility on her own shoulders. Very courageous. I've made a decision. The responsibility is entirely mine. It was very clear from the beginning is that our main dramatic agents are five guys who are assassinating people. They have to be plausible as guys who are working for an intelligence agency, who are field operatives for an intelligence agency. So we had to figure out why guys who weren't sociopaths were doing this job, why these guys, why guys who would be vulnerable to the kind of moral doubts that one would have, and how to treat uh, that subject without falling into uh, all the obvious cliches of the, the, the hitman, his doubts. It's strange, isn't it, to think of oneself as an assassin? Think of yourself as something else, then. And these five guys are all very different. With different ages, different backgrounds, uh, therefore different upbringings. Some have been brought up in Europe, some have been brought up in Israel, and they've been selected for their different qualities. Kieran Hines plays uh, Carl. His job is cleanup. 
after an assassination, he picks up shell casings. He gives misinformation to the first on-scene police and reporters, so it's never traced back to this team. I never thought you'd last. Carl is some kind of moral imperative about are they actually doing the right thing. He wants to be meticulous about the work that they have to do. And therefore, in that case, he wants to be absolutely specific that the targets are clean and that there's uh, no collateral damage. Nobody innocent gets hurt. So sometimes there are dilemmas. Do you have any idea how many laws we've broken? It's time to stop your agonizing. It's counterproductive. And then we have uh, Hans Zichler, who uh, plays Hans. And um, Hans is in charge of getting our team across borders through his skills at forging documents. You might say it's like a quintet, a musical quintet. They are very, very sharply defined characters in themselves, what they do, what their faculties are, what their possibilities are, and what their, sometimes their hesitations look like. They have different ways of speaking, of behaving, but they know they are forged together, they are composed together. That's what I see. Steve, played by Daniel Craig, is kind of our getaway car driver. He takes care of all the transportation to move our people around. Unless we learn to act like them, we will never defeat them. Steve, at first, is very gung-ho. And the way he deals with life is that um, you go like a bull in a china shop. You go head first and you, that's, you know, damn the consequences. I just don't think he expects the emotional turmoil that he starts feeling as the movie and it progresses. And that's kind of really what interested me so much about doing it, because he's flawed, and I kind of like playing flawed characters. Why did you put a firecracker in that fun? Because I didn't want to blow up the building. Matthew Kesevitz plays Robert, and he's someone who is in charge of assembling the bombs. Robert is um, not a trained killer. He's more of, um, of somebody who committed to the cause of Israel and uh, who was ready to fight for, for his land. And um, I was blown away by the script. It's a totally intelligent movie about hatred and vengeance. There is no glory or outcome, just pure destruction. And the movie is a living thing. Every day, every day, something new came up. Every day, Stephen had more inspiration and started to bring more ideas to the film and, and understand himself what the picture was starting to look like. And it was amazing to see the process. And it all came so naturally and so fast. It was amazing. And the uh, leader of the team, of course, is played by Eric Banner. He plays Avner. So why'd that make you team leader? Because he really knows how to cook a brisket. <laughs> Avner doesn't really know why he's been chosen and doesn't really know what his specific skill set is that he's meant to be offering the group, other than the fact that for some reason he was chosen as the leader. Why me? So what's wrong with you? I'm not an experienced field operative, so I'm not known. Not even I know you now. And I think that is intimidating for him. I think it's a really great thing for the character and for the audience that we really know why the others were chosen. But really, why was Avner chosen to, to lead those five men? And why, in fact, was he chosen to, to, to be a part of the mission? I saw Eric Bana as Avner, funny enough, when I saw The Incredible Hulk with my kids, because I had been working on Munich when Incredible Hulk hit the theaters. And in the scenes where he wasn't a digital character jumping all around, I saw a, a warmth and a, a strength, and even a little tickle of fear behind his eyes, which I think humanizes people, no matter what their jobs. And I was very determined that I was gonna humanize the characters in the story. This is a human story. So Eric was my first choice from, I think, the outset. I was in LA finishing off the, the movie Troy, and um, I got a phone call saying, Steven Spielberg would like to meet with you. And uh, he told me of his intention to make this film and told me about the subject matter, which luckily I was familiar with. And at the end of it, I was kind of politely sitting there wondering what this had to do with myself. And I asked him what this had to do with me being there. And he said, I'd like you to play the role of Avner, who's going to be the, the, the lead character. So I was, you know, shocked and surprised and thrilled and scared, of course. And um, from that moment on, I started researching and preparing for this. And about 18 months later, we started shooting.
I remember sitting with Stephen and I asked him why he chose Eric for the part. And he said because when he met him the first time, he saw a great deal of humanity inside of him and he knew that this character does really horrible things. And this humanity will help, I think, the audience identify with him. I guess the simple rule of thumb for me was having cast Eric Bana first to, to play Avner was that mm. none of the other team members could look like Eric Bana. Uh, as a matter of fact, none of the team members should look like each other. So I, I, I cast a band of extremely eclectic, not look-alikes. And, uh, and their personalities ranged from Hans, who's very quiet throughout the entire story, to Steve, who's rather bombastic. And I think it was very important not just to find different looks, but to find different acting styles, different accents. If history is to be believed, Steve was South African in real life, and Hans was German in real life, and Carl was German, and Robert was French and Avner was a Yeki Jew, meaning he was born in Germany, but he was raised in Israel. Listen, you're doing reasonably well. Reasonably? You're spending a lot of money. Well, we expected that. I had one big scene with them that we shot where we meet up in a, a safe house in Frankfurt. A very big scene, and it took us two days to shoot this meal where we kind of catch up about halfway through the film. With, and when we finished shooting it, we all went, wow, you never get to do scenes like that in movies anymore where the barometer, the emotional temperature of all these different characters has have so many different kind of viewpoints and personalities and levels of playfulness and mystery and enigma that gets drawn into conflict. So it was great to be able to play something that substantial with very fine performers. It was really unique, obviously, because we have uh, you know, a, a Brit, an Irishman, a Frenchman, a German, and an Australian. And there were nights where we'd, where we'd have a good drink and, and talk about world politics, and it would get quite heated in different areas, and we all really, really respected each other and, and are all very, very passionate about the countries we come from. So we had some really great conversations, and I'm hoping and assuming that that camaraderie really comes across because it was, you know, 100% genuine.